Okay, we are off to uh, chapter 14, so we're skipping uh, 13 for now, uh, to go to 14, which is the rest of the organic stuff. Uh, then obviously we'll go back to 13, which is carbohydrates, and then uh, we'll be done, hopefully. We'll see. All right, so pretty much in this chapter, it's everybody that's left, so that's going to be carbohydrates. <laughs> carbohydrates? No, that's going to be uh, carboxylic acids, uh, esters, amines, and amides. Uh, so let's talk about, again, officially here, carboxylic acids. Uh, carboxylic acids have the functional group of carbon-oxygen double bond and the OH. So it is this part right here, um, which has basically a carbonyl carbon and also the OH group. So it really does consist of two really polar parts, uh, the oxygen here being more negative the carbon being more positive, and it also has that OH bond, which is also negative and positive. These sort of parts to this group here, this functional group, gives carboxylic acid some uh, important properties, one of which is uh, it does, as we will see, have a pretty high boiling point because it has the ability to hydrogen bond there at the OH. And it also has that other polar part there, the carbon-oxygen bond as well. Now, the carboxylic acid group, much like the aldehyde group, uh, will always be at the end of the molecule. And the reason for that is, again, because it does contain the hydrogen. Uh, so because it has this hydrogen, and as we know very well, hopefully, uh, hydrogen can only have really one bond or two electrons. Uh, it can never be interior on that, so that hydrogen has to be at the end. So again, much like that aldehyde group, uh, we'll find this guy either at one end of the molecule or the other end of the molecule. Um, also, because of that, as we will talk about here when we talk about naming, um, just like the aldehyde, you do not need to give the location of where the carbon-oxygen double bond is with the carboxylic acid because of that. Uh, but of course, also, like the aldehyde, when you do number, that should always be carbon number one. So wherever that is located, I guess either left-hand side, right-hand side, one end or the other end, uh, that should always be carbon number one in terms of, of numbering all the other groups that may be attached. But once again, uh, you uh, do not need to give the number where that's located. Um, <clears throat> We uh, do see our uh, carboxylic acid group sort of in line structure form underneath here. And again, what you will typically see is they will draw in the OH and again, draw in the double bond there. And once again, that would be obviously a carbon there. So this would be the part of the functional group in line structure. And as we see here as well. Now, also because of that hydrogen, if it should be attached to sort of a ring type structure, much like the aldehyde, it cannot incorporate itself into the ring again because of the hydrogen. So I guess for a lack of a better description, you'll see it sort of coming off of the ring like we see there. Uh, in this case, if I blow that up a little bit. Uh, again, this would be our carboxylic acid group. And in terms of numbering, wherever that group would be attached to the ring uh, would be considered carbon number one in terms of numbering. And then obviously, whichever way you need to go to get the smaller number for any groups that may be attached onto that. Uh, in terms of naming, not too bad. It is like a oic acid sort of ending. So you drop the last part of the name and put oic acid. Much like everything else we've talked about, it is based off of the uh, you know, 10, first 10 alkanes. Uh, so you can drop the E and put oic acid uh, at the end of it. <clears throat> so this one here, that is the benzene ring. And this would then be known as benzoic acid. And that would be the carboxylic acid name. Uh, here, right here is uh, two carbons, which is based off of ethane. And that would then be known as ethanoic acid. Um, that's also acetic acid is a common name. And that's basically vinegar is basically the main component there of vinegar. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> uh, so here, as we can see, we drop the E, put the oic acid. 
Um, so that's methanoic acid, uh, ethanoic acid, obviously one carbon here based off of methane, two carbons here based off of ethane. You obviously do want to count the carbon that's attached uh, to the uh, carbon oxygen double bond as part of it. So as I mentioned before, if we kind of go through these couple of names here, just to see again how we get there, we want to count the longest continuous carbon chain, much like anything else that we've done. It does need to include, obviously, the functional group. So in this case, if you went straight across here, one, two, three, and four, that does contain the functional group. By the way, you can also get four by going one, two, three, four. That way, it's all good, whichever way you want to kind of do it. So if we took the four there in yellow, uh, that would, again... Uh, be based off of four carbons, which is butane, since it has a carboxylic acid group. Uh, that is where butanoic acid part of it comes from. And really, the group that's attached there is this methyl group. And this here would have to be carbon number one, which means our methyl group there is at carbon number three. And we have three methyl butanoic acid in the case here this is the one kind of like i drew a second ago with the benzene uh the whole entire thing here is the benzene ring once again we will see the carboxylic acid sort of off of the ring attached and that is where we get the benzoic acid part of the name coming through we see actually two groups here two chlorines which is where the dichloral part of the name comes from. And at this point, whoops, going back. At this point, we will call this carbon number one, and that's carbon number one that is part of the ring where the group is attached. So to get us the smaller numbers going clockwise in this case gives us two, three dichloral benzoic acid question on any of those sort of names there. <clears throat> so here's a couple other ones and some common names. Um, I would say in terms of common names, acetic acid and ethanoic acid, uh, those are two that are used probably interchangeably a lot. Probably most people will use acetic acid. Um, so that's a good name to know that they are kind of the same thing, ethanoic acid and acetic acid. I would also say the first one here as well, uh, methanoic acid and formic acid is also a, a two kind of common, or the formic acid is a common name that's used a lot still. So you should, again, have some recognition probably that these two things are the same. Uh, we will strictly try to go by uh, the IUPAC way of naming, but people do use acetic acid and formic acid a lot still because uh, they're acids. Um, so you will perhaps see them come up um, maybe along the way. Uh, we will obviously roll with these guys for the rest of them here. <clears throat> so formic acid uh, is this guy there. Uh, acetic acid is really the major component of vinegar. All right, so why don't we do a couple here. So why don't you try uh, give the name of this guy. And then why don't you also draw, uh, let's do three ethyl, uh, pentanoic acid. All right, so give the proper name here. Hopefully that's not what it is. And let's go with uh, three. One here, one, two, three, four, five carbons. That looks like your longest choice. Remember, if you started here, you got to go up in this way, which would only give you three carbons. Uh, so five carbons there based off of pentane. We see all our carboxylic acid group. So we'll go with pentanoic acid. 
Uh, this would definitely be carbon number one here. That would be carbon number two. And really at carbon number two, there's just a blank line, which in line structure is a methyl group. As we talked about, there's carbon at the end of it and three hydrogens. Uh, so that would then give us uh, two methyl pentanoic acid. Any questions on that one there? Coming to this one, we'll go backwards. So first off, oic acid tells us uh, we do have this as our functional group. Uh, we also know that pentane is five carbons. So one, two, three, four, and five. Once again, that group does have to go at the end and you could put it at either end since you're drawing. I will go up here on the right-hand side and put my group. Because I did that, that makes this guy carbon number one for me, uh, which means that carbon number three, I have an ethyl group, which is also a two carbon group. And that's pretty much everybody. We're going to throw some hydrogens in here. So we need two. Uh, we need one there. We need two there. Need three there. Need two there. And we need three there. And there you go. Yeah. If we want to do a little line structure, we can start with the five carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, we would go off to our OH here and double bond it to make our carboxylic acid group. This obviously would be carbon one, two, three, four, and five. And at carbon number uh, three, we would have a ethyl group, two carbon groups. So something like that would be the line structure version. Any questions on that there? Uh, in terms of the light? It, it really doesn't. Um, it doesn't matter now. I would say most people will probably draw, try to draw the group where it kind of comes up to the top of the V and kind of attach the group up there, but it really doesn't matter as long as it's on that right group. Other questions down and to the right. I could choose either way. Uh, so that's three, which is based off of propane. Because we have the carboxylic acid group there, it becomes propanoic acid. Uh, with this carbon right here being carbon number one, which means this carbon is carbon number two. And right there is a methyl group at carbon number two. Uh, so that would be 2-methylpropanoic acid. Any question on that one there? Coming to our guy on the right here, we have a benzene ring, not just a benzene ring, but a benzene ring that has the carboxylic acid group on it. Uh, so again, that's benzene. Drop the rest of it and becomes a uh, benzoic acid. Uh, because this is really the functional group, and as we talked about, it will be off of the ring. Uh, it will make this carbon number one. And in this case, if we go clockwise, that should give our group the smaller number. Obviously, if we went counterclockwise, we would have a larger number. And that would put the bromine group there at three. The three bromol benzoic acid. Any question on either of those names there? Okay, so uh, one more here. Let's do a little drawing. Why don't you draw the condensed and the line structure for this one? Uh, so do condensed and line. Looking for uh, four chlorohexanoic acid. So we definitely know that we got that group going. Uh, the hexane part tells us it is six. So we'll start with the condensed structure here. So you can do six carbons. That looks like six. That's good. I am going to uh, put mine over here on the right. Again, you could put it on the left if you chose to do so. Uh, that would make this carbon number one, which means carbon number four for me would be right about here where there is a chlorine. And once again here, everything else would be hydrogens to get me there to four. So a couple there and a couple there. Any questions on that one? 
Uh, line structure, you would do the same thing, really start with the uh, six carbon. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, since this is the last carbon, that is where I'm going to put my double bond. I'm also going to draw a line down to the OH, which will give me my carboxylic acid part of it. Uh, that will then be carbon number one, which means here, two, three, and four would be here with a chlorine. Yeah. Any questions on either of those there? Question on how to name uh, carboxylic acids, draw carboxylic acids. Yeah. All right, so then let's talk about some uh, properties of carboxylic acids. Uh, some of the carboxylic acid salts, which are carboxylate ones, are used as preservatives. Um, the polarity of a carboxylic acid, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, there's a lot going on. It actually has two polar groups. Again, the carbon oxygen or the carbonyl group, where we got some polarity happening. And we also have some polarity here happening. That's going to give it a lot of ability to dipole-dipole or hydrogen bond. Uh, so it's going to give it the ability to hydrogen bond and do some dipole-dipole interaction, which is polar-polar sort of interaction uh, that can happen. Now, because of that, they are uh, really soluble in water because it actually gives a carboxylic acid a couple places to interact with water. Uh, so at that carbon-oxygen double bond and also at the, I'll draw it a little bit bigger here, our OH group, when we do have water to come, which are polar, the negative side and the positive side there. So we can get some hydrogen bonding happening there. Uh, we also can get some hydrogen bonding happening between water and another water molecule on this end of the molecule. Uh, can actually get some hydrogen bonding happening in a lot of places. So remember, for hydrogen bonding to happen, you need basically a bond between hydrogen and either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So any of those guys have the ability to hydrogen bond. Because they can basically interact with water the way water interacts with itself, it makes them soluble in water, and they will mix really well. Uh, so again, uh, ethanol, for example, not ethanol, uh, ethanoic acid or acetic acid uh, would be sol uh, soluble in water. Um, but much like any other sort of organic group that does have the ability to be sort of soluble in water, uh, it will decrease as you build out more and more carbon. So once again, kind of the bigger the carbon-hydrogen part of it, uh, you get that really big nonpolar part that does get in the way of sort of the interaction of water uh, with those polar groups and the solubility does start to decrease. So much like most things, once you start hitting about five-ish or so carbons, you start to see the solubility start to decrease. And that's right about here. That's six carbons, seven carbons. And before that, obviously, is one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four carbons, five carbons. So upwards of about five or so carbons, you're going to have pretty good solubility of a carboxylic acid in water. After about five or so, you're going to start to see the solubility decrease. And again, it's really just a matter of this back part just being a little bit too nonpolar, too big getting in the way of the, where water can interact with the, uh, the functional group. So you do start to see that solubility decrease. Now, carboxylic acids, by the way, just a reminder, we've seen carboxylic acids, how we make them. Carboxylic acids are made from ultimately a primary alcohol, right? It is a primary alcohol. that goes through an oxidation where we lose a couple of those guys that makes our aldehyde. All right, so primary alcohol to an aldehyde to one more oxidation. 
which gets us our carboxylic acid that occurs, right? So a reminder, that is how we make a carboxylic acid, ultimately all the way back to a primary alcohol, but really directly from an aldehyde that gets oxidized. Uh, and again, the oxidation there is, as we talked about in the previous chapter, kind of sticking the O there in front of the hydrogen in that particular case. Because it is a carboxylic acid, it will really uh, work as an acid in water and the same sort of definition of acid bases that we talked about, like a Bronsted acid and a Bronsted base. So the acid here will basically donate is H over. And it is the, for these guys that are acids, it is that H, just part of the OH group that's polar is the one that will be donated. When it does, it makes H3O plus and this is what is known as a carbox, carboxylate ion. Um, we don't have to worry about naming carboxylate ions, but it basically can do an acid-base sort of reaction. In this particular case, the water would be acting as our base. And obviously this guy would be acting as our acid with the H plus being basically donated over. So basically the same sort of reaction we talked about when we talked about acid and bases, broad said Lowry sort of definition of an acid and a base. So here is uh, butanoic acid and same thing. It is going to be this H on our carboxylic acid here. That will be donated over to our uh, water. And again, it basically will make a carboxylate ion. It basically loses the hydrogen. So we get an oxygen with a negative sign at the end and we get hydronium ion. A lot of carboxylic acids like acetic acid or ethanoic acid, uh, they are weak acids. So they're weak electrolytes, which is again, why you see our arrows kind of heading in both directions. Like we talked about with weak electrolytes. Um, they will kind of mainly stay together in solution. <clears throat> because they're also acids, they can react with traditional bases and do a traditional acid-base reaction where basically it's the same thing as what we talked about with acid and bases. When you take an acid and a base, you basically get a salt and water. And just like we talked about when we talked about the formation of water, it comes from the OH from the strong base, comes from the H from the H plus from the acid, and that is how we make the water. The salt is really an ionic compound. When it loses the hydrogen, it becomes negative, and the sodium comes over here. It really is actually just a double displacement reaction. The H plus and the OH come together, and the sodium and this guy comes together and makes it over there. Again, this is what is sometimes referred to as carboxylic acid salt. It's again, the same idea as a acid-base reaction, salt and water being formed, take water out and basically put the other two things together, uh, give you the salt part of it. We're not gonna worry about naming the salts, so you don't have to worry about naming any carboxylic acid salts, but you do need to know the reaction. So looking at this reaction, once again, our acid will donate its H plus over, but basically our water is gonna come from these two guys. And then basically you just take off the H and bring the K over, and this is our salt that's being formed here. Again, you can see really nothing changes on the other side. This stays exactly the same as it was, except that you took off the H plus. So much like we talked about with acid bases, when it loses an H plus, right? Not just an H, but when you lose the plus, you become one more negative. So that is where the negative charge comes from. Um, and here we have our water basically. <clears throat> All right. Um, carboxylic acid salts are really ionic compounds and uh, they're solid at room temperatures. They have high melting points and they're usually soluble in water. As I mentioned earlier, they are oftentimes used as preservatives. 
All right. So if we were to sort of look at what would happen here, propanoic acid, we would start with our three carbons. My, my screen. And, uh, uh, remind me later. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so if we were to uh, just draw what happens here, once again, um, we would take our propanoic acid. So that is three carbons with our carboxylic acid group. And we would fill in our hydrogens. And if we react it with sodium hydroxide, once again, we know that this is really going to be an acid and base reaction, which means I should make water. And once again, the water is going to come from the OH from the base and the H from the acid there. And that will give me my water. And pretty much my salt here will be what is left over. So all of this. And it will now have a negative charge and my sodium will have a positive charge and that would make my salt in this case. So it is just gonna be sort of an acid-base reaction making water, I'm really kind of putting everybody together. It is basically the exact same thing as what we do if you just take a regular acid like HCl and sodium hydroxide. This is the H, OH and the H, which makes our water. And then basically what we have left here is a sodium ion and a chloride ion, which would give you sodium chloride. In this case, we just have to have a bigger negative guy left over than just Cl minus, but it's basically the exact same reaction as that kind of simple acid-based guy that you put together. Um, so any questions on that there? <clears throat> All right, here's a prettier picture of that, what we just did. All right, carboxylic acids are a part of the metabolic process uh, within our cells. Uh, during glycolysis, uh, glucose is broken down. Uh, during strenuous exercise, you know, we kind of make these uh, pyruvic acid is reduced, but here is pyruvic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. And again, here's lactic acid, which is also our carboxylic acid. Um, also in the citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle, uh, we see carboxylic acids. They're very common in amino acids. Amino acids have a carboxylic acid group as part of amino acids. Um, and in this case, our amino acid uh, can be broken into uh, CO2 and um, a sort of acid as well through there. So we do see carboxylic acids in a lot of uh, things, including cells in our body and a, a number of amino acids, kind of the structure of amino acids. Like I said, uh, one part of it is this sort of carboxylic acid group that's part of it. All right. So we're not going to worry about all that. Uh, any question on carboxylic acids? <clears throat> All right, then let's talk about another important group where are, are esters. Uh, esters are really made up of two things. They are formed from a reaction of a carboxylic acid and frankly, an alcohol. So what happens is when we throw these guys together, out goes water and in comes our ester group which looks something like this so this is the ester group where uh, typically this is attached to another carbon and that is the functional group it is really made up of those two things uh, so it is based on uh, the carboxylic acid group unlike the carboxylic acid group because it does not have the hydrogen at the end it typically will never be kind of at the end like the carboxylic acid group. So that group will sort of be in the middle of the molecule where you'll find that functional group uh, because it will have sort of this carbon, oxygen, carbon run. So it will never really find itself at the very, very end. 
Um, basically, aspirin is a uh, ester, as we'll see a picture of it, I think, in a bit here. But esters are synthesized from the reaction of carboxylic acid and water. It is what is known as an esterification reaction. And really, as I just showed you, pretty much all you have to remember is basically take water out, basically, is how you do it. Um, so you could have any carboxylic acid you like, however many carbons you like. We'll throw a couple in here. And you can take an alcohol, also doesn't really matter. You know, you do this one. When you go to put these together, as I might've mentioned before, is a really good idea to help you visually see it, uh, to always sort of back up the hydrogens to each other. So if they happen not to be drawn like that, like I just did here, it's a lot easier to make sure this hydrogen and the OH hydrogen are basically back to back. Uh, so if I were to do this, I probably would take the, the guy on the right there and redraw it. So I would start with the carboxylic acid. I would then turn that alcohol around so that the H's basically back up to each other. And again, the reason for that is all you have to do in this case, if you sort of do it like that, is essentially put a box around water, however you want to make the water, so something like that. And now what you have pretty much staring at you, if you take the water out, is your ester. You basically take the water out and just stick everybody together. You start on the left-hand side and just keep writing here. So... Obviously, what's in the box is going to go out, so we won't copy what's in the box. So we will continue on the other side of the box here. And there you go. That would be your ester right there. And that is, again, an esterification reaction. That's a single bond at the end there. And we would obviously have water uh, that comes out in this case. So this reaction is not too bad of a reaction. Carboxylic acid and a alcohol to help you if you need to draw sort of the product definitely kind of align those things up so you can just put a box around um the water and uh basically all you have to do is to draw what's left basically when you take it out any questions on that there okay. same thing here uh what's going to happen uh with our carboxylic acid and our uh, alcohol, our carboxylic acid here, and this is the ester that comes from it. When we look at something like this, uh, the way you want to kind of remember it is these guys are put together in that fashion, which means you want to think about these things by looking at it between uh, the carbon and the oxygen single bond. And as you go towards the carbon oxygen single bonded side, whichever side that may be, that is always really where the alcohol came from. So that's always the alcohol part of it. And as you go from the carbon oxygen double bond side, so going through, if you will, going through that carbon oxygen double bond that way, should always be where the carboxylic acid comes from. And that's really important in terms of what we're gonna talk about here, naming. And also if you have to kind of draw it as well, to kind of know that distinction. So uh, heading to the single bonded oxygen, it's always the alcohol part, heading towards and through the, uh, other way, basically, towards the carbon-oxygen double bond, that is always where the carboxylic acid part comes from. Now, esters are found in fats and oils. Uh, esters also are responsible for a lot of flavors and smells, uh, like bananas, oranges, strawberries. And I think in the lab this week, you'll make some of these, kind of pop them together, and you know, you'll be able to smell some different things if you choose to do that. 
uh, in line structure here, uh, we could take a look at that guy on the bottom. Maybe yeah. so we got that. So even in line structure, where you would want to break it apart is always between the carbon oxygen double bond and that oxygen single bond. So always there. Once again, to the right here would really be the alcohol part. And again, going opposite direction, kind of through the double bond and away from the single bond, uh, that would be our carboxylic acid part. So this sterification reaction, as I mentioned, is basically this reaction that we just talked about. And really, that's all you need to remember on this reaction is take the water out and basically put everybody together. Um, here, we take these two guys, we're going to take the water out. And that is obviously where we get the water from. And then really, 100% of it just stays together the exact same way. Uh, you can see here, CA3, carbon double bond skipping obviously the box we then pick up with the rest of it coming this way so as the easiest way to draw it is basically just to kind of align those two guys with the two h's facing each other from the two functional groups and just put a box around water and draw what you got left any questions on that there <clears throat> All right, so here's another example of it. So why don't you do this one here? Uh, why don't you write the equation? Draw what you get when you take propanoic acid with methanol. So it's the esterification reaction. Good practice of drawing all those things. Let's see what you come up with. Um, so we'll draw this, which is propanoic acid. So as soon as I see oic acid, I should know it's a carboxylic acid and propane has three. Uh, so we should have something like this. Again, we'll fill in our hydrogens. So that is a carboxylic acid. I then have methanol, OL tells me it's an alcohol. Methane is one which means I really should have, uh, you know, something that looks like this. And that is an alcohol. By the way, once again, knowing that I have a carboxylic and an alcohol together, that is going to give me an ester, uh, which should have this connectivity. So again, these are things that you want to think about to help you decide how to do this. As I mentioned before, I'm going to make it a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to take my alcohol and turn it around so that the hydrogens are facing each other. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take my alcohol and redraw it because I want to make it easier for myself. And one way to make it easier for yourself when you have this type of reaction is to make sure that those hydrogens basically are facing each other uh, when you want to draw it. Because now all you have to do is remember the other important thing, which is in this reaction, we're pretty much going to take water out and that is two hydrogen and an oxygen, which is water, uh, which will give us some water over here. And at this point, all that's left really is to start over here and just work your way this way and copy exactly what's there. Obviously, take out what's in the box. And I'm just going to draw it underneath since I ran out of a little bit of room. Um, so CH3, CH2, C double bond O. I'm going to, again, eliminate what's in the box. We're going to connect up on the other side. And once again, there is our ester connection right there. And there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions on that one? So once again, as we talked about, I think before, you know, it's good uh, to um, understand that if you take like this thing and this thing, this is what you produce. And again, if you understand sort of the functional groups, it sort of helps you have a pretty good idea as to what you should kind of end up with uh, when you draw it. Any questions on that one there? All right. 
Why don't we try another one? Why don't we try... Um, uh, do, uh, what is the product when we have... Uh, here so once again i know when those come together we should get our ester which again should have this sort of connectivity happening now in this particular case uh, i also know uh, water should come out so if you want to write water it'll help you remember maybe you should take water out uh i got things kind of a different way than we've seen it before but it doesn't really matter once again just need to get the h's to line up to make it easier for yourself so really i'm just going to turn this guy so that the h's line up with each other and if i do that uh i'm just going to redraw it here kind of the other way so i'm just going to turn this guy around and try to remember what i drew uh, i think i have this I think it was one carbon, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so uh, now I got the H's lined up, and now that allows me to put my box around water. And once again, we're going to box water like this. And at this point, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to start here, and that's going to be CH3, CH2, CH2O. We're going to skip what's in the box because that's the water. We're going to then make our connectivity here coming this way. And in this case, our ester group is actually hanging out over here to the left uh, because of the way the things were drawn. If you turned it the other way, it's the same molecule. So if you drew the opposite, it's okay as well. Any questions on that one there? So these are all esterification reactions, which is obviously how you prepare an ester. And again, it's prepared from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol with some acid as a catalyst. Once again, a lot of times the catalyst will be written up here. It's like H plus. That implies an acid catalyst uh, is being used. So once again, not really crucial in terms of what you draw, but uh, that's sometimes obviously included and you don't necessarily have to include any part of it into your picture because it really doesn't uh, affect it that way. Any questions on how to draw esters? <clears throat> Okay, um, so there's that one here. So let's talk about naming esters. And as I mentioned before, it is really critical to understand your ester group and sort of which way is which. Uh, so once again, the single bonded oxygen, kind of breaking it right apart here between the carbon and oxygen single bond and heading towards the single bonded oxygen is always the alcohol part. And again, going the opposite way towards the double bond should always be the carboxylic acid part. Now, even if it's drawn sort of backwards, like we just did on the previous one, where we have the O into the double bond, works the same way. Gonna break it here. Once they are going towards the single bond, in this case, which would be to the left, away from the double bond would be the alcohol part. And going the opposite way to the double bond uh, would be the carboxylic acid part. So it doesn't matter really which way is pointing the group. Uh, it works the same way towards the single bonded side, always the alcohol part. Uh, towards the double bonded oxygen side, always the carboxylic acid part. So the carboxylic acid part uh, <clears throat> is the base part of the name. Uh, so the base part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid part. And that part gets O8 at the end of it. So kind of like drop the E and put O8. Uh, really drop the IC uh, from the... Uh, carboxylic acid and put eight at the end of it. But if you want to go back to the alkane name, drop the E and put O8 at the end of it. The alcohol part is named as a alkyl group. So basically the alkyl group, uh, like ethyl, methyl, you know, whatever it may be, uh, that is how we name it. So O8 for our carboxylic acid part. 
and basically like a methyl ethyl propyl type group for the alcohol part. So once again, as I mentioned before, that's why it's really important to understand, you know, which part of it that you got going on. So if we take the one in that previous example, the ester that we made, once again, we want to focus in on the two parts of it, which is always right there. So heading this way, which is to the single bond side, should be my alcohol. And that is named as a group. And there's only a one carbon group there heading in that direction. So that is a methyl group. Heading the other way to the double bonded side and away from the single bonded side is my carboxylic acid part. It is based on the carbons that are there. So that is one carbon, two carbons, three carbons. That is really based off of propane. You could drop the E and put O8 at the end of it. And then we basically just put them together. So this would be methyl propanoate. Yeah. Alcohol part and carboxylic acid part. Any question on that there? All right. So here are some, just to take a look at it. Once again, here's where I wanna break it apart. Going to the single bonded side is my alcohol side, which means it's gonna be named as a group. That is a two carbon group, which is where the ethyl comes from. Going the other way, that is our carboxylic acid part. And that also is a two carbon group, which is based off of ethane. And we drop the E and put O8. So that is ethyl ethanoate. Once again, coming here, alcohol part this way. Might be the one we just did. That is a one carbon group, which is a methyl group. Going the other way, that is a three carbon group. So that is our propanoate. So that's our methyl propanoate. In this case here, right about there, heading this way is our alcohol part, which is a group. So that is two carbons, which is ethyl. Heading this way is our carboxylic acid group. And that actually is a benzene ring, which means it's really benzoic acid which is where it becomes benzoate. So that is ethyl benzoate. Again, you can drop the last part there and put O8 on the end of the benz benzene ring. Again, the real way is to really take it from, uh, from the carboxylic acid name and take away the IC and put eight. So that's where you get your benzoate from. Uh, but sometimes it's easier just to go back to the alkane name, take the E out and put the O8 at the end of it. So however you want to remember it, uh, that is sort of how you do it. Question on any of those names there. Yeah. Yeah, it's always at the end. So it's kind of like the base part of the name. Uh, so the carboxylic acid, if you want to think about it, is sort of the main part of the name. And it will always end in O8. Yeah, so uh, and that's also, if you see O8 at the end of a name, that's how you know you're dealing with an ester as well. And it will be based off of the carboxylic acid part. And then the alcohol part will always be named like a group. So methyl, ethyl, propyl, that type of thing. And those guys will always come first, yeah. Other questions? All right. Uh, so uh, aspirin basically is, uh, you know, one of these guys here. This is our ester group right there. Uh, so you could actually make aspirin by taking, again, uh, that is a carboxylic acid and uh, alcohol, basically. And you could put it together. I'm sorry, carboxylic acid on the left and alcohol on the right and put it together and you will get your aspirin there. So fun one, you'll do some of these here. Oil wintergreen, uh, it's methyl uh, salicylate, has a pungent minty odor uh, used in skin oil and stuff like that. So you'll do this 
as well. So here's our alcohol and our carboxylic acid. And that's always where the connection will be. So once again, we would take water out right about there and squeeze those two guys together and nothing else will change. As you can see here, all of this is exactly the same as all of that. So nothing changes. We basically just put it on our alcohol part here and that's what's left over there. All right, so uh, let's do uh, naming this ester here. Why don't you also draw, uh, let's draw something, I don't know, let's draw, uh, let's draw butyl, uh, And definitely want to focus in right about here, remembering that going to the single bonded side, there's our alcohol, and that is going to be named as a group. So that is a two carbon group, which means that is a ethyl group there. Heading towards our double bonded side, that's our carboxylic acid side, uh, which will get the O8 at the end of it. And that is one, two, and three, uh, which would be propane basically and O8. And putting those together will give us ethyl propanoate. Question on that one there. Now, drawing it, when we do see the O8 at the end, it should tell you that it is an ester. And I will say probably this is one of the few things that you draw that it is probably helpful to actually to start with the uh, functional group. So since you can recognize it as a ester, I would start with the functional group. And really you could, <coughs> excuse me, you could draw the single bond of oxygen either side. It doesn't really matter left or right. Uh, but remembering that again, the side where you do draw the single bonded oxygen, that is the alcohol side. And that should be the group name. So uh, that is butyl, which means four. So I'm going to really put on to the right-hand side here four carbons, hopefully. And uh, to the other side uh, will be our carboxylic acid part. And pentane basically means five. So we'll put on five here and very bad place to draw that thing. So let me go underneath here. Start in the middle, give me a little bit more room. One, two, three, four. Five. And at this point, it is really just hydrogen. So we're going to put in some hydrogens. I do. Thank you. I do have an extra one there. You do want to make sure you remember that there is a carbon right there on the double bonded and count correctly would be good. Thank you. And there we go. So that is uh, five which would be our pentane and that is four which would be our butyl there in that case question on that or how to draw it so again because we do uh, kind of leave the carbon there you want to make sure you're, uh, you do count it there and don't over put in there like i just did question on either of those there all right sorry another one here let's give the name for this guy here We'll break it apart here. Hopefully we recognize our ester group. So that is basically where we want to break it. Again, heading to the single bonded sides, our alcohol, which has three carbons. And again, that would be named as a group. So that is a propyl group. Uh, heading the other way there, which is our carboxylic acid side. That is the guy that gets the O8. And that is two carbons, which is based off of ethane. So this would be ethanoate here. So propyl ethanoate. Any question on that guy or how to name or draw esters here? Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. No worries. Other questions? Okay. All right, so as I mentioned, a lot of esters uh, are fruits, uh, a lot of fragrances and perfumes of flowers are due to esters. 
Uh, small esters are volatile, which means they can go into the gas phase really easily, which obviously means you can smell them uh, if they do so. <clears throat> They're also soluble in water as well. So here, looking at some of these here, uh, here's where we break them apart. This is the alcohol part, which is our propyl, and the one we just did, which is propyl ethanoate. That is pairs. Uh, we come here, we have one, two, three, four, five, which is pentyl ethanoate. That is bananas. Uh, here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's octal and also ethanoate is oranges. And again, breaking here, that is two, which is ethyl. And then we got a little bit more carbons on the back end here, which is four. Uh, so that is butanoate and that is pineapple smell. And then apricots here is one, two, three, four, five, which is pentyl and our carboxylic acid part, which is four butanoate. So pencil butanoate, it gives you that sort of apricot smell. And again, you will make some of these, I think, in lab this week. Do you need to know those? You don't need to know those in the sense of what makes each smell, if that was your question, but you do need to know how to properly name them, obviously, if you were given the formulas and stuff like that. All right, let's finish up by uh, drawing these two guys real quick here. Okay, let's take a look since we're at the end here. So we see oic acid, which tells us it's a carboxylic acid. Uh, so butane would be uh, four carbons. So since this is a carboxylic acid, as we talked about, you could put it at either end. So I will put mine there. Uh, that means that three, that would be one, two, and three, we would have a bromine. And then obviously we would have the appropriate number of hydrogens there should look something like this guy. Any questions on that one? OH should tell us it's an ester. So once again, we're going to start when we draw an ester actually with the ester group. And again, the alcohol part is the ethyl uh, and that is the single bonded oxygen side. And ethyl would be two carbons. The O8 is the carboxylic acid side where the double bond is and propane would be three. Once again, we already have a carbon here. So we just need two more carbons and now everything else here will be hydrogen. So there, 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 and there. Yeah. Any question on that one? 